Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. K, and I will be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series about ecology. Topic for the day is going to be learning. So like always, let me get you your objectives, and then we'll start going. So by the end of today's video, there are three things that I need you to know or be able to do. First one, understand the basic concept of learning. Second, differentiate between innate and learned behavior. And finally, describe various types of learning. So without further ado, here we go. As far as learning is concerned, base level, it is a specific link between experience and behavior. So if you have learned something, that means that you have taken some sort of experience you have, you have, and then you link that experience to some sort of behavior. The behavior might be speech, it might be action, it might be whatever, but learning is specifically linking one experience to another behavior. Now along with that, there is innate behavior versus learned behavior. Innate behavior is a behavior that is present in an animal from the time it's born. It has nothing to do with actual learning. It's just like a switch. You flip that switch on, give the animal the proper stimulus, it goes through the behavior without ever having seen it before. A learned behavior is something that the animal develops throughout its life. So innate behavior, you're born with it, it's a switch that flips on and off. Learned behavior is something that is acquired throughout the course of an organism's life. Now, for the rest of the video, I am going to go through specific types of behavior. And a lot of the types of behavior that we're going to talk about were learned about through cross-fostering and twin studies. Um, cross-fostering is a type of study where one organism is raised by another animal. And the purpose of a cross-fostering study is to see which um, behaviors are learned and which ones are innate. So, for example, if a kitten has been raised by a gorilla, what behaviors that may be present in a gorilla will show up in the kitten, and what behaviors in the kitten are present in the kitten, whether it's raised with a gorilla or not. Um, similar studies have been done on twins uh, that have been separated at birth and raised in different environments. Um, a lot of mental disorders have actually been learned about through twin studies because genetically speaking, twins are the same. So it provides a really good um, source of study to see if the environment that those kids were raised in had a significant impact on the way that they are when they grow up. Now, these cross-fostering studies and twins studies have given clues into some of the types of learning that we're going to talk about for the rest of the video. So first up we've got imprinting and this is a very famous experiment. Um, early behavior scientists realized that certain organisms will follow or imprint to whatever the first thing they see when they are born is. Um, in birds, imprinting is especially important. Um, when a bird is hatched, it will imprint on whatever the first thing it sees moves. Now, if this is the mother bird, that's great because it imprints on the bird. It will, lead, it will learn the behaviors of its mother. It will learn migratory routes. It will learn the things it needs to survive. And it will also learn pair mating, which means that when it mates later on in life, it will pair up with the same species. But scientists learned that if they raised or hatched the birds within an incubator and then showed them some other moving object as soon as they left that incubator, they would imprint to whatever that object is. So it could be a person walking around, in which case they would follow that person for the rest of their life. It could be a ball. It could be whatever. So whatever they saw first, that was the thing that they kind of attached to. Now, it was shown that um, birds that imprinted on a human had a hard time finding mates later in life. They would not pair up with their same species, and they had a hard time learning kind of the cultural things that went along with their species. So scientists actually got to the point where they would have people in costumes that exhibited the necessary characters of the birds uh, see the hatchlings as soon as they were born and imprint to the person in the costume and then they went on to do things for endangered species like teach them safe migratory routes or help them to associate with other members of their own species so imprinting is the attachment or bond that is formed early on in the life of an organism 
There is also spatial learning, which is the idea that organisms can recognize cues in their environment and kind of make mental maps of what's going on. One example of this is a digger wasp, which is a wasp that builds burrows in the side of a sand dune. And there was a scientist who wondered how, if you've got a sand dune that has thousands of burrows in it, how does one wasp that leaves and covers over its burrow before it leaves find its way back to the same burrow when there's thousands of them around. And he realized by moving different parts of the environment around that the wasps were navigating based on land markers that were in the area to find their own, um, their own burrow. And they also did some work with birds. There's types of birds that will store um, caches of pine seeds throughout the summer and then in the winter they'll go to those caches to get their food. And they realized that moving environmental objects, these birds had formed a mental map that told them that the pine nuts were found halfway between object one and object two. So uh, just kind of put in your mind, spatial mapping or spatial learning is building a mental map of where objects are or how to find your way around. You do this when you learn how to drive. You know to turn left at this mark or left right at that mark or to keep going through the stop sign, etc. So that's spatial learning. There's also associative learning, and I'm sure that you have probably heard of classical versus operant conditioning. Associative learning is just associating a certain behavior with an object or a color or a sound or something like that. So in classical conditioning, this is the uh, experiment with Pavlov's dogs where he would ring a bell and then feed the dogs, and eventually just ringing the bell would produce salivation in the dogs in anticipation of food. So they had associated food with the bell. There have been thousands of experiences experiments done like this where a certain type of action has been associated with a you know a sight or a sound or something like that. Operant conditioning is trial and error learning where an organism learns uh, to either go towards or avoid an exper experiment experience sorry based on some stimuli. So the experiment to remember with this one is B.F. Skinner put rats in a box in this box, there was a lever, and that lever produced food. Through trial and error, the rats learned that anytime they pressed that lever, they got food. So it took a long time for the rats to actually start hitting the lever, and the first couple times were accidental. They were running by, they hit the lever, they got some food. But over time, they learned that anytime they pushed that lever, they got food. So that would be an example of operant conditioning. And both of those are types of associative learning. Now the highest level of learning and kind of mental work is cognition. And cognition involves uh, basically problem solving, learning, associating, remembering, and overcoming some sort of challenge. Now there have been a couple of, not a couple, there have been a lot of studies done in this area. I'm just going to talk about two of them. Um, one of them is being able to recognize the difference between same and different, which forever scientists thought was only present in more complex organisms, but recent studies have shown that bees are able to actually learn to distinguish between same and different. So an experiment was set up that was something like this. The bee would be faced with a box that was essentially split into a Y like this. There was a barrier here, there was a hole in each one of these, and one side would get food. And what they did with the bees is this first wall with a hole in it would have one color on it. It was so it would have like a color around the wall. Inside this choice chamber, one wall would have the same color. One wall would have a different color. And the bees could be taught that if the first color they saw was red, then if they turned through the red wall, they would get a food reward. Or they could be trained that if the first color they saw was red and they turned through the blue door, they would get a food reward. So the bees were learning to associate same and different. And then what scientists later found is that if they put them in a chamber that had a totally different same and different, so instead of colors, it might use a pattern of vertical stripes versus horizontal stripes. So the first thing the bees would see coming in is a horizontal stripe pattern. Then it would know if it had learned same equals food, horizontal stripes here. If there's horizontal stripes here, you go through it and you get food. So the bees had learned to differentiate between same and different. And then there's problem solving, which is basically coming to a novel solution to overcome some sort of challenge. One example of this is a study done quite a while ago where scientists had an enclosure. 
they hung bananas from the ceiling they put a bunch of chimps in there and just put boxes around on the floor and eventually the the chimps learned that if they stacked the boxes on top of each other they could climb up those boxes and get the banana so that would be an example of problem solving any tool use is an example of problem solving it is something that is very present and very well studied in uh, certainly primates um, it's been seen in like uh, dolphins obviously humans do it so novel solutions to uh, novel challenges and we have got learned behaviors um, a learned behavior is just any behavior that an animal learns from its surroundings um, the one you kind of want to associate or talk about with this is song learning in birds there is a specific song that goes with each type of bird now how the bird learns that song can vary by species so in some birds over the first you know 25 50 days of their life they will listen to the songs that are around them in the next stage of their life they will kind of trial and error a pre-song based on what they had heard and then eventually they develop their adult song if they don't hear the song of their species in those first critical days then they will never learn the song of their species there are other birds that kind of learn and add to and adapt to their song throughout life so both of these are examples of the organisms learning from hearing the adults that are around them last thing I want to wrap up with today is social learning and social learning is any learning that happens from the individuals that an organism is surrounded with a couple examples of this is nut cracking and general tool use it's been very well shown in primates that they learn skills from one another so on the right there you see a capuchin monkey um, capuchin monkeys teach each other to use rocks to crack nuts um, there's another type of learning that goes on in primates where they use sticks to fish termites out of mounds. The adults are very well skilled at it. The juveniles are not so much so. So the juveniles learn this skill from the adults. And then also um, there are types of monkeys that have different types of alarm calls. So in the book it talks about vervent money, monkeys. And based on the type of predator, whether it be a snake, a jaguar, or an eagle, the monkeys give a different alarm call and there's also a different response for each call so jaguar call you run up a tree snake call you look down eagle call you look up um, in their young days the juveniles will just kind of trial and error calls and based on the response of the adults around them they'll learn whether that call was correct or not so all of those are types of social learning and that's it I hope that you actually learned something from this video haha <laughs> cheesy science joke for the day um, anyway this has been the lab 207 webcast my name is Mr. Kite and we'll see you again